and good morning everybody. Welcome to NFD 16. The topic for today is Accelerate Incident Response. Uh, we'll introduce the Defender Lifecycle model. This is a model that we introduced to the market about a couple of um, months back. Uh, we'll walk through the concept of what the Defender Lifecycle model is. And then we're pleased to be joined today by two of our ecosystem partners, Splunk as well as Phantom. So after I walk through the concept of the Defender Lifecycle model, <coughs> I'll hand it over to Wissam Ali Ahmad, who's a solutions architect in Splunk. Uh, he'll walk through uh, the, an overview of Splunk enterprise security as well as Splunk adaptive response, uh, the adaptive response framework. And then we'll actually see demonstrations in action uh, by Noam Sirkin, a veteran at NFD, senior technical marketing engineer at Gigamon, uh, who'll show a demonstration of how the Gigamon IP fix metadata could be consumed in Splunk and used in incident response. We're also pleased for the first time to have our solutions engineering team, Hamad Altaf, to join us, who will actually be demonstrating the Gigamon adaptive response for Splunk. By the way, all of you are privileged because none of these have been released in the market yet, so you're actually getting the preview of this for the very first time at NFT. So thank you for joining today. And then after that, we'll have uh, 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 an overview of Phantom, where Robert Trustel has joined us from uh, Phantom. Um, uh, they're really a big player in security orchestration. And uh, there'll also be a demonstration of the Gigamon application for Phantom. And uh, we're joined by Steve Tarantino today, who is our information security engineer in our security operations team. So yes, we do drink our own champagne. Mm -hmm. And we want to give you a taste <laughs> of that today. So let's start with the Defender Lifecycle model. Um, a quick recap for those of you who are not here at NFD 15, because I walked through the GigaSecure security delivery platform at that point. This is a model that we introduced, uh, the platform that we introduced about three years back. And the key takeaways there are, you know, today there is very little time to actually take actions in real time from a threat prevention perspective, especially as networks get upgraded to 40 gigabit and 100 gigabit ethernet networks. Think about it, all of you, many of you are uh, folks from a networking background. There's just about 6.7 nanoseconds <coughs> of time between two consecutive packets on a 100 gigabit ethernet link. Just not enough time to actually be taking actions in real time. When you combine this with the fact that there is actually an ecosystem of malware distributors, of malware, hundreds of millions, literally, hundreds of millions of variants of malware are created every year, the consequence of that is that breaches are inevitable. So what does that mean from an attacker kill chain perspective? While the historical focus has been a lot in, on threat prevention, <coughs> as you go forward, it has to morph and evolve to complement prevention with detection, the emerging space of prediction, as well as containment slash response. Okay? So legacy approaches to try to solve this would offer very limited visibility because you end up sprinkling tools all over the infrastructure. That means there's a huge amount of cost. You still have significant blind spots, and that doesn't quite cut it. So when we introduced the security delivery platform architecture, it was an architectural way to think about security for the modern enterprise, where you have a streamlined deployment of tools that obtain pervasive visibility to data anywhere in the infrastructure. When I talk about data, I'm talking about data extracted from network traffic, because perimeter protection alone is not sufficient. When you observe network data, you actually get a very rich source of uh, information from the network. So that is the concept of the security delivery platform. There are some core services that are offered in the platform. And GigaSecure is our brand that we offer for the security delivery platform. In today's session, we'll be focusing a lot on the metadata engine, uh, the second uh, pillar that you see there, as well as the application programmer interfaces in terms of how you could actually integrate between the tools. So this is the story so far. Now, when you look ahead, what has happened in the last three years is there's been an incredible amount of adoption for the security delivery platform architecture. Today, close to 70% of our business <coughs> is driven by security-specific use cases. And what we see is, in, in, in a nutshell, four broad categories of security tools being used to connect to our platform. Some of them could be prevention. A lot of them are around detection and the emerging space of prediction that's still evolving and as well as, as containment. And a constant uh, feedback that we've been getting in the last couple of years from our, from our customers is, 
they want to get away from security silos. They want to find a better way to integrate this because multiple security tools are used in the infrastructure. So how can you have a more agile infrastructure, something that arms defenders to take quick corrective action when anomalies are detected? And that is exactly the reason why we came up with the defender lifecycle model because what we see is the lack of a model that arms defenders today to effectively fight against actors, threat actors. In this model, there's still a big role for prevention techniques, but we look at that as basic hygiene. Yes, you need to have a firewall at the perimeter. Yes, you need to have a certain level of host prevention or endpoint protection techniques. There has to be segmentation techniques that are implemented in the <coughs> infrastructure. But when you look beyond that, you need to start understanding the context. Understanding the context by applying big data and machine learning techniques, which is where detection tools are, are evolving to. You also can have the potential of triangulating the intent. Now, once you understand the context and the intent, you can begin to start predicting possible uh, actions that the threat actor could be taking in the next stage. And that, can, that of course, involves uh, applying um, the emerging space of um, artificial intelligence and cognitive solution techniques. Now, remember the detection and prediction tools are typically deployed out of band in the infrastructure. So if you just detect, and not take any action, that's not very useful. So you have to be able to contain and mitigate the potential um, uh, you know, actions being uh, taken by, uh, by the threat actor. And, if, and, and for this to be a, a, a well-integrated system, there has to be a closed loop of actions across these different phases and not you know, operate in silos. For that to happen, there has to be a common substrate on which such a model is built. And that's where visibility can come to the fore. The key thing to note here is that the services that are offered by the platform can vary from step to step. So for example, in the case of a prevention technique, you can offload overburdened firewalls by offloading the capability of SSL decryption, a topic that we spoke about at NFT15, if you recall, or provide inline bypass for maximizing uh, the performance as well as the resiliency of the overall infrastructure. In detection and prediction phases, Metadata plays a very important role because a lot of security information event management tools, they don't work very well when raw packets are consumed. Frankly, packets can sometimes be too much of data. So if you begin to extract the most important artifacts, the important metadata, and input them into the SIM or input them into an intelligent um, analysis platform like Splunk, then the value that you can get can be significantly enhanced, right? So, Combine this with the power of automation, then you actually have you know, something really um, uh, important that, that could be accomplished. But the key thing there is containment. Now, why is this so important? Because today it takes weeks to contain, and it is a quagmire of bottlenecks <coughs> involving processes uh, that ultimately slow down the action that could be taken, and ultimately that provides advantage to the adversary. So if you have to speed up containment, the three essential requirements. One is you got to be in all the right places. You got to be able to orchestrate the automation. And you also need to be able to take all the right actions. And this is exactly the place where many of our partners and customers have come to us and, say, and said, well, today you're no longer out of band. We are also in line. In fact, we've got a very high attach rate for inline applications today. So why don't you take action? And you, know, you can use the power of a position to actually be taking action. So many of the detection uh, uh, security tool vendors have been pretty keen on working with us uh, in this area. And the net advantage is that you can actually convert this into ultimately a machine-to-machine -machine problem. I know some of this is forward-looking, and not all things can be automated, certainly not in the area of security. But we've got to start. And hopefully, the demonstrations that we showed today will provide a taste of where we could get started. Those are not the only use cases. There will actually be many others that could be done. So with the benefit of a model like that, our hope is that we can automate a lot of the actions that are taken in the Defender Lifecycle model, which is one of the reasons why we thought we should actually have our security operations team be part of this demo so that you can get a, a live demo of how we're actually doing some of these uh, things in the Gigamon infrastructure. So that's some of the, uh, the key uh, concepts behind the Defender Lifecycle model. The Defender Lifecycle model, model is not a product. It's actually a model that can actually help you to base your modern security infrastructure. 
So key things to remember are you know, the ability to integrate across those four uh, phases of prevention, detection, prediction, and containment slash response. I'll use the term contain containment and response um, interchangeably. Remember, it's not just about visibility, but it's about visibility and control. Um, automation is key, and that is what ultimately helps provide the foundation for orchestration, bringing some of the concepts of DevOps into security, what is now being called as DevSecOps. And ultimately, uh, we hope that the GigaSecure security delivery platform that Gigamon offers can be that underlying foundation to help things together. So that's the concept behind this. That's my last slide. We'll open it up for questions. Um, anybody in the room or those uh, in the chat room, uh, if there's any questions on the concepts, I know everybody's keen to see the demo, and uh, once we make sure that the concept is well understood, we'll, I'll turn it over to Visam. You mentioned one API. Um, yeah. I, I missed that. And what, what your API that would accomplish what? That's correct. So our application programmer <laughs> interface that we offer, if you look at this, for example, when you want to take any actions uh, or any learning from the detection phase and apply that to containment, for example, you can use our APIs to help orchestrate between those two. So I so, talk to Giga Secure API or yeah, whatever exactly, you call it. Exactly. And then you talk to downstream tools. So you're kind of an abstraction layer between. So uh, we can talk to downstream tools, or we could also take actions in the Gigamon platform itself, because sometimes we are front ending many of the tools. Yeah. Right? So that becomes a simple way to affect actions.